this is, this, is come, this is being stored somewhere else. Now we need to actually find the actual source of that file and cut it off. And that's where network file trajectory comes from, which we'll talk about in a second. But I like to say indicators of compromise give, you a, give an analyst a hand to say, hey, these are the type of categories that are occurring. These are things that I need to be aware of on my network. If I see these, for example, communication or an intrusion event where malware went ahead and communicated with a known C2 command and control server. Well, now I have a problem. That's a tier one event that I need to deal with. Network file trajectory, we've talked a little, we touched briefly upon it before. And that's simply monitoring all the traffic that's coming across your network, identifying those files and their disposition. Are they known, are they known good files on a whitelist, like the National Research Laboratory, or, are they, or the National Resource uh, Reference Library, or are they, um, are they known bad malware? Do they match the malware signature? More importantly, do they have no reputation? No one's ever seen this before. Uh, the other weekend, I downloaded 1,400 malware samples across from the internet. 1,100 of them were the same exact code. Just somebody had a process to where it would automatically increase a byte, a hexadecimal value, every time it sent it out. So there was no samples for it, but it was the same code. Having these capabilities, you can go ahead and create a custom signature for that, not based on the end result, the container, like the executable, but the code that's reused inside of it, and then deploy it. Because none of us have time to wait for our antivirus vendor, who's swamped, to give, us a, to give us a custom definition that we need now. We need the ability to actually remediate those threats as they're occurring, dynamically. And just like we're watching everything that's coming in our network and determining, OK, if it's good or bad, and if it's unknown, be able to tell us at a later point in time whether or not um, it has become suspect. We need to do the same thing on a particular file system and say, OK, this particular executable touched these processes. This is how it behaves. Now we can create custom detection for it. We need to be able to carve malware off of our files, be able to extract it from our network traffic so we can analyze it in a pristine state. We need to be able to create signatures not only on the host, the endpoint product, but also in memory, especially for some of, the, the, uh, some of the attacks that leverage things. For example, if someone's in your network and they're using PowerShell to you know, pivot across your network, well, what are you going to do? Block PowerShell for all your administrators? How are you going to identify it if it's resident in memory? So you have to have built to actually parse memory for those strings, those unusual indicators of compromise. We have to have the ability to sandbox our own files, execute them in an environment that's not exposed out to the public. Because the last thing, uh, the last breach I worked on, the company received a particular sample. They don't have a lot of resources. They submitted up to VirusTotal, found out it was unknown, no signature. That's pretty common. But unfortunately, bad guys are watching that just as well. And as soon as they see that one of their products are being, or one of their files are uploaded into the cloud, well, then they change a couple bytes. It's undetectable. The rinse, wash, repeat, the cycle begins again. And that's more work for you guys. And like I said, you want the ability to be able to create that custom signature and deploy it out based on your findings. And just as detection is a good piece, we need to find out the entire scope. What's the business relevance, especially the leadership? Not only were we infected, but what exactly went outbound? So integrating third-party products such as Endace, with a top-of-the-line uh, intrusion detection system, we're able to say, okay, once we identify a particular event, and, that, and that, ev that event occurred, let's go back in time and say all the traffic that went outbound to it. What's the data that's being exfiltrated? Put a price on that. Because what we're seeing, and I love this quote from Mandia, was of the total cases we investigated in 2012, we saw attackers lodge over 1,000 attempts to regain entry to former victims. So they haven't forgot. They're looking for you to reinstall that case, reset that VMware snapshot, or, uh, or, or take your system back to a, to a known state, such as through a backup process. And the only way we can collect all that data is obviously leverage big data. And I ho hopefully, you guys had the opportunity to speak with our team out here. And if you build an architecture, obviously, everyone's pushing towards big data. You need to be able to tap your network. You need to have a reference architecture to go ahead and manage that, to have a plan, a strategy in place to do that. Because this is essentially what we're trying to do. During our breach timeline, 
our bad guys running around, we're trying to compress that. We're trying to compress it left by our ability to contain or remediate the threat, especially as it morphs into itself, it changes, we can change with the threat and stay ahead of it, but also have that full stack visibility, contextual awareness of what's going on during our network, identify surveillance indicate through either indicators of compromise, honeypots, threat, you know, threat intelligence to go ahead and compress it to the right. That, lets your, that allows the bad guys to feel pressure, not lessen the ability for them to ingrain themselves in your network and become a greater problem for you in the long run.